and welcome back to this channel. Today, we are going to be studying the asymptotic notation. Let me start um, by saying that this is one of the most important topics in data structures and algorithm. Okay? And this topic came from mathematics. All right. The main purpose of the asymptotic notation is to help us analyze a function. And since the time complexity of an algorithm is represented as a function, we can also use the asymptotic notation to um, analyze the runtime of an algorithm, the runtime complexity of an algorithm. So what are the asymptotic notations that we have? So, okay, so we have the big O notation which is used to denote the upper bound of a function. We have the big omega, which is used to denote the lower bound of a function. And we have the theta, which is used to denote the average bound of a function. So let's speak each of these and uh, discuss it in detail. So let's start from the big O notation. So what is the definition of the big O notation? Okay, so the function f of n equals big O of g of n if and only if there exists a constant c and n naught such that f of n is less than or equal to c multiplied by g of n for n greater than or equal to n naught. Um, I understand that is kind of like um, a full statement and it might look a bit confusing, right? So let me give an example. So let's say you have your f of n to be equal to uh, 2n plus 3. Right? So I can say that 2n plus 3 is less than or equal to so whatever function or whatever term I'll be putting here must always be greater than whichever result we get from this particular term. So what do I mean by that, right? So let's assume uh, we say this is less than or equal to 10n. Okay, let me remove, let me just see 10n. All right. So, I mean, we have n is greater than or equal to 1. So if I put 1 here, this will be 10, right? 10 times 1, 10. If I put uh, 1 here, this will be 5, right? That will be 2 plus 3, that is 5. So 5 is less than 10, right? So this is valid, okay? So another question that might come to your mind is... Um, is it compulsory we use then? It's not compulsory, right? So just find a term such that um, whenever you slot in a value as n, it will always be greater than whatever is in the left side. So what do I mean by that? So um, this can also be 7. Okay? So this will be 7, this will be 5, if n equals to 1, right? All right, so that is how you um, get this. Okay, but to make the whole thing more simpler, um, you can say that 2n plus 3 are uh, equal to 2n plus 3n. Okay? So that's going to be that's going to be equal to 5n, right? So this is kind of like a simple way. So just pick the two times that you have here, make this 3n, right? And you add two together and you have 5n. So that will be 5n, right? So if you pick one, if you make n1, that will be 5. Okay? And if you make n1 here, that would also be 5, right? So remember it is less than or equal to, so it is still valid, okay? And if n equals to 2, this will be 10, right? And this is going to be equal to 7. So 7 is less than 10, so you are valid. So in this case, um, we can call this uh, c, remember the definition, we can call this um, g of n, okay? And we can call this the entire thing here um, f of n, right? 
so we can say that f of n right equal to big o of n remember um since g of n equal to n right and we said f of n less than or equal to c times g of n and g of n here yeah, means n so we can say o of n right so i believe that is kind of simple right so instead of using 5n okay can i use a higher term um let's say 5n squared so if um n equal to 2 right this is going to be 4 and that's going to be 5 right 2 raised to the power 2 okay so less than or equal to 2 times 2 plus 3 right so this is going to be 7 right less than or equal to this will be 4 4 times 5 that will be 20 right so this is still this will be valid this will still be valid right so we can say that f of n equal to big O, okay, of n squared, okay, however, um, normally we do pick the term or the function that is closer to f of n, so that's the best function to pick. So, in this case, we will go with this, right? Even though this is valid, right? Um, we won't use it because it is completely lost, not useful. We have something closer, so why not use it? So, we're going to use this over here. So, we can say, uh, right? So, from what we have here, we can deduce that this function, right? belongs to um, this class okay so if that is the case right then every function uh, above this function every function starting from uh, that function like this will be the upper bound okay and every function coming this way will be the lower okay that is too much in top so I can Will be the lower bound, and this function itself only, right, will be. Okay, I think I can change this now. Um, the average, okay, bound. So I believe this is kind of straightforward. Right? So every function starting from n above is the upper bound. Okay, and every function that is below uh, n, starting from n itself, is also the lower bound, but n itself will be um, the average bound. Okay, so this means that f of n can be big O of n raised to the power 3. This is still valid. Okay, f of n can still be um, big O of you know, 2 raised to the power n, this is still um, valid, right? But f of n cannot be big O of log n. Why? Because log n is a lower bound to n. It's at the left side to n. Okay? So I think that is straightforward. I remember I told you that always pick the function, okay, that is closer to f of n okay so in this case we have um n so that is the closest so we're going to pick this in this case okay all right so now we're going to move to the big omega 
Okay, so this is the big omega. So this is the second notation in the um, from the list that I drew out the other time. Okay. So what is the big omega? Okay. So let's define uh, the big omega. The function f of n, okay, equal to uh, omega of g of n, big omega of g of n, if and only if there exists a constant c and n naught such that f of n is greater than or equal to big omega of g of n, where n is greater than or equal to n naught. Uh, this looks um, a bit bulky too, okay, but what only changed is the symbol. This symbol represents the big omega and the equality sign, right? So this is greater than or equal to, which is kind of different from the big O, where we have less than or equal to. Okay, so let me give an example to explain this further. So let's assume um, f of n equal to 2n plus 3. Right, so let's say 2n plus 3. Okay, so this has to be greater than or equal to so whatever term that will be here, whatever, uh, whatever term that will be here must always be less than the result we get from here. Okay. So what do I mean by that, right? So let's assume uh, 2n plus 3 greater than or equal to n, where n is greater than or equal to 1, right? So when n equals to 1, this will be 1, and this will be 5. So 5 is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so I think that is kind of straightforward. All right. So if n equal to 2, right, so this will be 2, okay, why this will be 2 times 2, 4, 4 plus 3, 7, right, so 7 is greater than uh, or equal to, 7 is greater than 2, so this is valid, all right, so we can say that, um, so we can say that f of n, okay, equal to the big omega, Right of uh, g of n. So in, um, in this case, this is the g of n, right? I remember that there is a one here. I mean, one, right? So this is our c. Okay. Then this is our f of n. Right, so g of n is equal to n, right? So f of n equals to big omega of g of n. So g of n will be replaced by n, right? So that's why we have, um, sorry, that's why we have this over here, right? That is the big omega. Okay, so this function uh, belongs to right this over here, right? So since this is the lower bound, right? Anything from this point downward is valid. So what does that mean? So we can say that uh, f of n equal to big omega right of square root of n since it is lesser right than n so it's, it is valid because we are dealing with the lower bound here right so we can say that f of n uh equal to the big omega right of log n this will still be valid okay so all this uh they are valid okay but we cannot say that f of n equals to the big omega of say n squared so this is not valid because n squared n squared is greater okay than n 
So it's actually an upper bound to N. Okay. So that is about um, the big omega. So the third notation is the tether. Okay, so this is the tether no notation. So the tether notation is used to uh, denote the average bound of a function. Okay, so the average bound uh, of a function. So let's look at the definition of the tether notation. The function f of n, okay, um, sorry. so the function f of n equal to the tether of g of n if and only if there exists a positive constant c1, c2, and n naught. Okay, such that C1 multiplied by G of N is less than F of N, less than C2 multiplied by G of N. All right, so this is also a long and a bulky sentence. Let me break it down for uh, you to understand. All right, so remember that um, we discovered that the lower bound, if F of N, right, uh, equal to 2N plus 3. Right, so the lower bound was n. Remember, so n would always be less than or equal to 2n plus 3. Right, then what I will get here is always less than. Remember, now this is going to be the upper bound, right? So we're going to have um, 5n. So there is one here. Right, so basically, we are kind of combining the, the the upper bound and the lower bound. Okay, so the combination of these two, not just the uh, we are com we are combining the least upper bound, okay, and the greatest lower bound. So that is what we are trying to do here. Okay, and that is called the tight bound. Okay, so. We can say that this is uh this is c1 this is uh g of n right this is uh f of n this is c2 and this is g of n okay so with this we are able to deduce the um the tether of this function. So if you put one here, if n equals to one, so let's assume n uh, equal to one. Okay, this will be one, right? So we have one. This will be uh, five, right? And this will be five. Okay. So this, so one is less than five. Why five is equal to five? I right? think so this is valid. If n equal to 2, okay, if n equal to 2, then we're going to have uh, 2 here, right, then less than uh, 2 times 2, 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, right, then uh, less than, right, 5 times 2, that will be 10, okay. So this is also true. Okay. So we can see from here that this function belongs to this. So this is the average bound. Now we can say that our f of n equal to the tether okay, of n. Okay, because g of n here denotes n, so we can replace g of n to be n, right? Please take note, take note that we can't say that f of n equal to theta of n squared. This is not acceptable, okay? 
and we can see that f of n equal to theta of log n. This is also not acceptable. Okay, so it has to be the closest, like I said, the least upper bound, right, and the greatest or the highest lower bound. So, and for this function, n, right, is the least upper bound and the greatest lower bound. Okay, so I believe that is uh, simple, all right? So this is how you um, deduce the bounds of your function. Okay, so I want to make a very, very um, great correction here. So I understand that most times you would see a lot of articles that says that big O represents worst case, um, theta represents average case, and the big omega represents the best case. That is totally wrong, okay? So case analysis is something different, okay? And in the next um, tutorial, I'll be explaining the case analysis of a data structure. That is very, very important because there is a lot of confusion around that. Thank you for watching the video till the end. I'll be so glad if you can subscribe and you can like. I'll be so, so glad you can share. Um, that would be nice. Thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.